strong and sweet like me. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are as well. If you're an OG watcher, thank you so much for coming back. If you're new to my channel, a very warm welcome to you and I hope everybody is doing very well. If you like what's going on here, please consider giving that like button a boop and a subscribe would be wonderful. So how is everybody doing? Are you guys reading what you want to read? Are you enjoying what you're reading? I really hope so. I think I'm having a pretty good year so far. Little life update, I'm still in the short-term rental. We're still kind of waiting. If you have bought a house before, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to say too much about it because I am a little bit superstitious, but I'm really hoping That'll have a new background for you guys soon. But so far, this has been a nice, cozy little place. My husband and I got a chance to kind of get out and about this past weekend and go into downtown Savannah and walk around a little bit. We had uh, lunch downtown at a place called Trailer Park. Is it Bar and Grill? It's a little vintage style restaurant and we walked around a few of the shops downtown. It was a beautiful day. And then we went to our first concert here in town last night. We went and saw Whiskey Meyer. Two of the bands that opened for them were Weathered Souls, which I had never heard of. And they put on a great show. I uh, absolutely loved it. And uh, Rival Sons, which I also had not heard of. And they put on a great show. All three bands are kind of Southern rock. But we had a really good time. It was a really good concert. I enjoyed it even more than I thought I would. My husband's more of a concert goer than I am. Uh, and because of him, I go and I get to see really, really good shows. <laughs> so that was a good time. But other than that, we're still kind of in a limbo of waiting as far as our living situation. But I can't really complain. Uh, we're really enjoying Savannah so far. But today, what I'm here to talk to you about are some books that I am super excited about that are going to be published and come out in March of 2023. I've said before that I like to narrow it down to have five books that I'm excited about. And I think I've only been able to do that one time. I think I have six books to talk to you today. I tried to narrow it down. And I did, actually, from my original list. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make a final cut, so I have six today to talk to you about. So let's get into it. First book I want to talk to you about is Hang the Moon by Jeanette Walls. If that author's name sounds familiar, you've probably heard of her book, The Glass Castle. I read that and I enjoyed it. So this one kind of stood out for me, but when I read the synopsis, I knew it was going to be something that I wanted to read. So this is historical fiction that takes place in the early part of the 20th century, and this follows Sally Kincaid. She is born at the turn of the century into a life of privilege. She is the daughter of the most powerful man in her small town. She doesn't remember her mom because she died when she was very uh, young. At the hands of her father, I guess during some violent incident, her father remarries, they have another child, Eddie. And as Eddie gets older, Sally is trying to teach Eddie to be more like their father, who I guess is a strong, assertive man. And something happens, something goes terribly wrong, and Sally is kind of put out of her house. A decade later, Sally comes back and she wants to become a part of the family again. And in doing so, she learns some deep, dark family secrets. As you know, I love a good family saga where there's secrets involved. And I think Sally also becomes a bootlegger. It's during the time of prohibition. So she uh, finds herself in a world of lawlessness and danger. And it just sounds like a good, fun ride. And I love historical fiction. And this just happens to be an era that I don't read a whole lot about. So I'm really excited to get into the whole prohibition era story. Hang the Moon comes out March 28th. The next book I want to talk to you about is I Will Find You by Harlan Coben. This is a mystery thriller, which, as you know, is a genre that I gravitate towards. Harlan Coben is quite a prolific writer. He has a couple of series that are popular. The most popular is the Myron Bolitar series. And I think I read the very first one in that series, and I enjoyed it. I don't know why I didn't go back to it. I think it was because it was one of Harlan Coben's early works. And I think I had some issues with the writing a little bit. Not terrible. I think I gave it three stars. But anyways, this new one is a standalone. It's not part of the series. And I want to give him another shot because he's written quite a few books since that book that I read. In I Will Find You, you're following David and Cheryl. And I think where the, when the story opens, this is five years after their son, Matthew, was tragically killed. 
and David is serving a life sentence for that murder, and Cheryl is remarried. David, I think, has always proclaimed his innocence. Five years down the line, Cheryl's sister comes to visit her, and she comes bearing a bombshell. I guess a friend of hers went on vacation and took a picture and was showing pictures to Cheryl's sister. I think Rachel is her name. Recognize a boy in the background that looks exactly like Matthew. And while Cheryl, you know, her logical mind says this can't be, she sees the picture, she knows it's her son. So she's left to deal with the fact that her son's not dead, he's out there, and she's got to find a way to find him, and her husband is sitting in prison for a com- crime he didn't commit. And then I think there's a prison bit break. I think David wa- tr- escapes prison to, so he can find his son and clear his name. So this one sounds like it's going to be very fast-paced, lots of action, lot, lots going on with this one. So I couldn't help but put this on my TBR. I'm super excited about it. I Will Find You comes out March 14th. This next one I want to talk to you about, I was a little surprised that I added it to this list because, well, I'll tell you in just a second. The book I want to talk to you about is 48 Clues into the Disappearance of My Sister by Joyce Carol Oates. That is a mouthful of a title. (laughs) And I have not had a good track record with this author. Now, I say that, and I've only read one book by her. (laughs) But it was an Oprah book club pick. And I usually have good luck with those. And it's somewhat highly rated on Goodreads. And they made either a movie or a miniseries about this book. And I don't know. Have you even mentioned the book that I'm talking about? I read We Were the Mulvaney's. And I did not get along with it. I think I gave it only like two stars. And so I kind of put Joyce Carol Oates out of range as far as reading any more of her books which is kind of harsh, right? Anyways, I saw this one and I read the synopsis. I'm intrigued. So this is another mystery thriller. And this follows two sisters, Marguerite, the beautiful one, and Gigi, the not so beautiful one. They live in upstate New York. One day, Marguerite, the beautiful sister, goes missing. The police are kind of stumped. They don't know if Marguerite's disappearance is due with foul play or if she just decided to leave her dead in life. But the more it's investigated, the more it is becoming clear that perhaps Gigi has some feelings of jealousy and maybe even a little bit of hate towards her sister. So as the story unfolds, I think we're finding out things about Gigi and we're finding out things about Marguerite. And the more we find out about both sisters, the more we understand where Marguerite is and why she has gone missing. So this is a relatively short book. It's only 288 pages in the hardcover. So I think I can give Miss Oates another chance since she's not asking me to read 500 pages. (laughs) I'm kind of intrigued by this one. I think intrigue is a more accurate depiction of how I feel about this book rather than excited, to be fair. 48 Clues into the Disappearance of My Sister comes out March 14th. This next book I want to talk to you about is a new-to-me author, and that is The Last Beekeeper by Julie Carrick Dalton. This is a dystopian slash sci-fi novel. This one, I think, opens up 10 years after an apocalypse, and the world is not the same as, as we know it today. I think that has to do with climate change and mass extinction. We're following Sasha Severn, and she is the daughter of The Last Beekeeper who is a famous researcher, and he has been incarcerated. So Sasha's alone, and she decides to return to her family home, only to find that there is a family of squatters there who are trying to escape the dangerous landscape that is our society in this world. And at first she feels threatened, but then she befriends these folks, and they start to kind of make a life together. But then one day, Sasha believes that she sees uh, what is thought to be extinct honeybee. I guess in this world, people who see honeybees are ridiculed and thought to be crazy because they've been extinct for years. But Sasha believes that this sighting is connected to her dad and her dad's research and why he was incarcerated. And I think this is a, this is a story of found family and uncovering secrets, not just of family secrets, but of political secrets and why the world is in, in the state it is. I'm really, really intrigued by stories that are dealing with the planet and 
where we're heading, especially stories of hope in trying to make changes that might make our future a little less dire. So anyway, Sasha is trying to uncover all these secrets, maybe cover-ups, and she puts everybody in danger, including herself. The story goes from there, and I am really excited about this one, like truly excited about this one. The Last Beekeeper comes out March 7th. The next book I'm excited to talk to you about is Dust Child by Nguyen Phan Quê Mai, who is a Vietnamese poet. This is a new-to-me author, likely because I don't read a whole lot of poetry, but I think she has some other novels out there. I just haven't read them yet. But this one sounded intriguing for a couple of reasons. For one, it's historical fiction, and it takes place during the time of the Vietnam War, which was during a time that I was born. Uh, my father was in the Vietnam War. Many, many people in my generation were affected by that war. So I'm intrigued to find a story that is in that era. So this takes place starting in 1969. Just so happens a booktuber near and dear to your heart was born in 1969. Anyways, and you're following two sisters, Trang and Queen, and they live out in the country. Their family's very poor, and in order to help their family pay debts, they move to Saigon and they become bar girls where they flirt, serve drinks, among other things, with American GIs for money. As the war is getting more and more intense, Trang gets herself caught up in a romance with an American GI helicopter pilot named Dan. Fast forward decades later, uh, the helicopter pilot is married to somebody else and they take a trip back to Vietnam and he's trying to work through PTSD. But unbeknownst to his current wife, he is also searching for things, searching for answers. I imagine he's searching for Trang. You're also following Fong, who is the son of a Black American and a Vietnamese woman who was abandoned as an infant. But as an adult, he is still living in Vietnam and he is searching for his parents as well as a way out of Vietnam and a better life. And in true literary form, these two storylines converge. We go from there. And I am very excited about it. Historical fiction, the Vietnam era. This sounds really, really wonderful. And check out this cover, by the way. I think it's beautiful. This would probably be an automatic cover buy for me if I were to see it in the bookstore. And this is 350 pages with hardcover, which is like the sweet spot for me as far as page count. So all the planets are aligned with this one for me. Dust Child comes out March 14th. And finally, the book I'm excited to be published in March is All That Is Mine, I Carry With Me by William Landay. That author sounds familiar, you might be saying. Yes, this is the author of Defending Jacob which I read and I enjoyed. And I think I rated it harshly because at the time that I read it, if you've read it, you know that the ending was, what's the word to describe the ending? It kind of blew my mind, but not in the best way at the time. I think with my reading history, I would enjoy it but more now, but I'm not here to talk about Defending Jacob. If you haven't read that one, I would recommend it. It's pretty good. But anyways, when I saw this author uh, has come out with a new one, I had to look it up and uh, I am intrigued by what I, what I found. So this is another mystery thriller. This one opens up in 1975. You're following the Larkin family, mother, father, three children. And one day one of the children comes home from school and finds that her mom is missing. And they can't determine if the father has anything to do with it, but there's no evidence pointing to that fact. They never find mom. And so these three children are grow up in a house with their father with this kind of black cloud hanging over that some people think that he was responsible for the mom's disappearance. 20 years later, the remains of the mom is found and the case gets dredged up. Now everybody in the town is kind of split. Even the, ki the kids, the three kids who of course are grown now and have their own families, they have their own lives. The question comes up again, well, did dad do this? So there's a line drawn and people fall on different sides of this line. So not only is this a mystery about what happened to the mom and why, but it's also a family drama and a story about loyalty and what happens when you believe in one thing and what happens when you're wrong and when that wrongness affects your relationship with the people you're closest to. So that intrigues me a lot and I'm really looking forward to this one. All That Is Mine, I Carry With Me comes out March 7th. 
So that is it. Those are the books that I'm super excited to come out in March. Have you heard of these ones? Are you excited about any of them? What books are you excited to come out in March? I would love to hear about them. Or you can just say hi down in the doodly do. As you know, I love hearing from each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.